I would first like to start out by showing you this picture. Think about how it makes you feel. Think about the memories that you had back in the day. Think about all the coloring, all the other people sitting around you, your best friends. Um, think about the teacher, how nice she was. Now I want you to think about all of the books that you read as a kid. Think way back. Think about Dr. Seuss. Think about all the other, where the wild things are. Think about all these children books that are now your favorite. I want you to think about the protagonists in each and every one of these stories. Are any of them of a minority race? I grew up a huge book reader. My mom used to read me every book on this shelf or just read any book right before I went to bed at night. And if you look through all of these books I just went through and not one of them has a minority protagonist. Doesn't that say something? Let's talk about the minority percentage. Races other than white make up close to 40% of the United States population. However, if you look at the percentage of books depicting characters from diverse backgrounds, you see that the ethnicity other than white and animals make up around 22%, 23%. Again, why is that? Now let's take a look at this picture through a deeper and more investigative lens. While each minority investigates a single mirror that doesn't even capture their entire image, you look over to the right and find a white child that is in a room filled with mirrors, and each of the reflection is something greater than himself. There's, you know, football players, there's kings, there's discos, it's all happy. And then you see the minorities, where it's dull, gray, not even the full picture. This is the America that we paint for our children. One of the problems that might be rooted in the fact that the overall industry of children's literature and the editorial department of children's literature makes up of predominantly white or Caucasian people. Do you remember reading about those shoes in class? Well, if you don't remember, it's basically the author, Maribeth Boltz, takes on the idea or takes on the likeness of a black kid, and he's in a living situation that necessarily reflects the stereotypes of black of a black community. It, it takes you through the mind of the character, how he wants to um, buy these shoes that makes everyone the cool kid. However, he or his family, his mother, can't afford them, along with another Hispanic boy, Antonio, who can't afford them. The story ends up having a very good message about, you know, sharing and friendship and empathy. Um, however, I do see that there is a potential problem, given the fact that Maribeth Boltz is a white female author um, writing the story in the perspective of a little black boy and expecting... Um, you know, the black community, black boys across the country to resonate and really understand her story. This brings me to one of my favorite books, Where the Wild Things Are. And I know you're probably wondering why I have this in there. And no, I'm not going to talk bad about it because it is one of my favorite books of all time. However, within this book, it portrays Max, um, a white kid, um, basically having an imagination, willing or able to go wherever he ends up traveling across this huge world traveling across the ocean for many days and many nights meeting the wild things and you know partying it up and becoming the king um and it really shows that you know you can have an imagination as a white kid and i'm not saying that books like those shoes or or books where the protagonist is a minority um do not portray that message however it is a lot more common to see um, a white kid with portraying, you know, an unlimited imagination as opposed to um, minorities being portrayed as, you know, living in harsh things, having to overcome uh, multiple trials. Yo Yes by Chris Rashka is one of my favorite books when I was really young. The reason why I liked it was because it was super easy to read and it was easy to follow. Basically, within it is just depicts a black 
boy and a white boy. And basically, they just talk back and forth um, between yo, yes, hey, yeah. Um, just easy words. Super simple. However, in the end, they become friends. This is the type of content that we need within our uh, society today. Showing that, you know, no matter what minority, whatever race you may be, that you still can become friends and find commonalities or similarities that ultimately bring you together rather than tear us apart. All in all, regardless of who's writing what or what race is writing what, any multicultural picture books with good intent help further the cause for diversity. Diversity is a good thing. It doesn't have to be all black and white. Uh, children need to see multiple stories of of people overcoming trials, people going through um, tribulations. Um, people need to kids need to see real world problems and need to dive deeper into the fact that not everything is sunshine and rainbows. However, you can do that no matter what your background is, no matter what situation you grow up in. Make sure that authors know that as we diversify our children's books, it'll only help bring together our nation.